Today we're going to be going over 4.2, which is angles formed by parallel lines. Essential question is, how is knowing angle relationships important? So first, you need to know what kind of angles we're looking at. So here is an example of two parallel lines cut by what we call a transversal. So this line right here is what we call a transversal. And because of um, the two parallel lines in this transversal, we actually have eight different angles that we get from this picture. And as part of those eight angles, we have four interior angles. And we have four exterior angles. So we need to talk about these angle pairs and how they relate to each other. Um, the first angle pair we're going to talk about is called alternate interior angles. And alternate interior angles um, is translated as um, alternate is across the transversal and interior is on the inside of the two parallel lines. So across on the inside. And the alternate across means across diagonally, not directly across the street if you think of them as streets, but across diagonally. And um, those angles will be considered congruent. So across diagonally, three and six are across diagonally, and four and five are across diagonally, and they will be congruent. And all of the angles for alternate interior angles will be on the interior. The next set of angles that we're going to look at are called alternate exterior angles, or across diagonally on the outside. And they are also congruent. So examples are 1 and 8 are across diagonally on the outside, and 2 and 7 are across diagonally on the outside. And all of these angles are on the exterior, or on the outside, so they will all be green angles. The next angle pair we'll look at is called consecutive interior. And consecutive just means that they will be on the same side and interior on the inside. So same side, inside. And these angles will be supplementary. So examples are 3 and 5 are on the same side of the transversal in between the two parallel lines, and 4 and 6 are on the same side of the transversal in between the two parallel lines, and they will add to be 180 since they are supplementary. And since they are interior, they will all be yellow angles. The next set of angle pairs we're going to look at are called consecutive exterior angles. And consecutive is same side, exterior is outside. These are also supplementary. So examples are 1 and 7, and then 2 and 8. And since they are all exterior angles, they will all be green angles. The last set of angle pairs that you need to know are called corresponding angles. And corresponding angles will be on the same side of the transversal, but they will skip over an angle, so we call them same side skip. These angles will be congruent. Those angles would be 1, skip over 3 and 5, so 1 and 5 are same side skip, 3 and 7 are same side skip, 2 and 6 are same side skip, and then 4 and 8 are same side skip, so those are all called corresponding angles. Now if you look, since they're on the same side and they skip, one will be on the outside, one will be on the inside. Same thing with this pair, one is on the outside, one is on the inside, and all of the pairs. So if you look, all of these angles are either congruent to each other or they are supplementary, which means there's only going to be two angle measures throughout all of this. So if you look at this picture, you can clearly see that 1, 4, 5, and 8 
are all obtuse angles. They will all also have the exact same measure. Um, remember, 1 and 4 are vertical angles, so they will be congruent. 4 and 5 are alternate interior angles, so they will be congruent. And 5 and 8 are vertical angles, so they will be congruent. The next set, um, the other sets of angles will all be congruent to each other as well. 2 and 3 are vertical. 3 and 6 are alternate interior, and 6 and 7 are also vertical. Now we're going to go to the next page and work some example problems. First, I want to show you that um, parallel lines cut by a transversal can look a little different. So here's another example of how they could look. In this case, my um, almost vertical lines are parallel and then my horizontal line is my transversal this time. The first step you should always do is label everything within these parallel lines. Um, I do need to go ahead and give you your angle pairs, so here are all your angle, angle numbers. So now you want to highlight your interior and exterior angles and also circle how all of your angles relate to each other. Now that we've organized all of this, we um, need to look at some example problems. So here's an example. So the first thing you want to do is see how they relate to each other. Um, 4 and 5 are across on the inside, which means they are alternate interior angles. And if you look, 4 and 5 are both red, so they are congruent angles. Since they are congruent, you need to set both of these equations equal to each other and solve. Move your smallest x first. It's the easiest way. 7x minus 4x is 3x. Subtract 6 from both sides to get it away from your x. Bring your 3x down. 30 minus 6 is 24. Divide both sides by 3 to get rid of your 3 with your x. Bring your x down. 24 divided by 3 is 8. So that is what my x equals. That, it, that, that does not tell me that's what that angle measure is. So in order to figure out what the red angle measures are, you need to plug x back into either one of these. Because remember that they are congruent. They are equal. So it doesn't matter which one you plug them into to figure that out. Um, I'm going to plug it into 4x because it's easier to multiply by 4s than it is by 7s. So 4 times 8 is 32, plus your 30 means that those red angles will be 62 degrees. So the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 4 is equal to the measure of angle 5 is equal to the measure of angle 8, which are all equal to 62 degrees. To figure out your purple sets of angles, you just subtract 62 from 180, which means all of my other angle measures will be 118. So the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3 is equal to the measure of angle 6 is equal to the measure of angle 7, and all of those are 118 degrees. You're now completely done with that problem. Um, let's look at one more. I want you to see what you would do if you had a set of um, supplementary angles. So this time we're looking at 1 and 7. So let's look above and see how they're related to each other. One and seven are on the same side on the outside. So they are consecutive exterior angles. And one was red and one was purple. So that means that they will be supplementary. Since they are supplementary, you will have to add the two equations together and make them equal to 180. First thing you do is combine like terms. 11x plus x is 12x, and 7 plus 17 is 24. 
We need to get the 24 away from the x, so subtract 24 from both sides. Bring your 12x down. 180 minus 24 is 156. Divide both sides by 12 to get that away from the x. And x is 13. So now we want to plug them back in to try to figure out what each angle measure is. So angle 1, we're going to plug 13 in for x. So 11 times 13 plus 7. 11 times 13 is 143. Plus 7 means that's 150 degrees. So that means the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 4 is equal to the measure of angle 5 is equal to the measure of angle 8, which are all 150 degrees. For our purple angles, you could do it one of two ways. You could subtract 150 from 180 and get 30 that way, or you could plug it um, 13 into the measure of angle 7. So 13 plus 17 is also 30. So whichever way you want to do it. I prefer to subtract from 180. Which means that my measure of angle 2 is equal to my measure of angle 3 is equal to my measure of angle 6 is equal to my measure of angle 7, which is all 30 degrees. Your notes are complete at this time. Make sure you go to the bottom and write your summary.